BM6 Avalanche is a versatile mechanical sweeper. It is optional to come with uh, two types of uh, conveyors, the uh, squeegee conveyor and of course the belt conveyor. Uh, eventually, when the sweeper is actually being set up, there are certain things that we're gonna have to be, uh, they're, they're gonna have to be set up with, uh, with either one of the conveyors to uh, achieve optimum operation of the sweeper. We're gonna start with the squeegee conveyor. So uh, the things that we're going to concentrate on, of course, is the tension of the, of the, uh, of the chain, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the squeegees, the alignment of the squeegees, and of course the, the, uh, the conveyor inside the housing. So we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna start off with, with the, uh, the tension of the, of the chain. So the, the chain, when it comes, when it's in optimum uh, tension, it's supposed to be about three and a half to four inches between the two chains. So in order to, to tighten up the chain, after, of course, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's stretched out. In order to do so, you will have to loosen up four bolts here and four bolts on the top. And, of course, the same thing will have to happen on the other side, which, of course, is the same way as well. Once those eight bolts here and the eight bolts on the other side are loose, then, of course, you can loosen up the jam nut on this jack screw and then rotate the jack screw clockwise that way will move the shaft, the upper shaft, forward and that will tighten up the, the, uh, the, 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 the conveyor chain. It is of course necessary to make sure whenever you tighten up the both sides of the, of the, uh, of the adjustment um, plates to make sure the adjustments are equally from the left and the right. Therefore, it's always advisable to do small corrections. Do not go overboard and make the corrections way too much. One turn on the left, one turn on the right. Two turns on the left, two turns on the right. That way the shaft will actually move equally. And then of course, that way we'll go to the next uh, inspection to where the alignment comes into place. Once the adjustment is actually achieved, and you have the distance between the two chains between three and a half to four inches, the next thing of course we're going to have to check to make sure the alignment of the flights inside the elevator housing is actually correct. So what we'll have to check is to make sure that the distance between the flight and the outside and the inside of the elevator housing on the left is the same thing on the right. It is advisable of course to go ahead and tighten everything down once this is actually confirmed and let the uh, elevator run for a few minutes to make sure that this is actually correct. At the same time, of course, the distance between the bottom of the flight to the bottom of the conveyor also it has to be somewhere around 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch. So therefore, that is actually achieved by loosening up the bearings and rotating the upper elevator shaft to achieve that distance. So in the back of the, uh, of the conveyor, of course, we're gonna to have to check the alignment as well as on the top of the conveyor. So we have to come here, of course, and we're gonna to need to check to make sure that the side of the, the inside of the conveyor housing on left and the right is the same distance between the housing and the end of the flight. Furthermore, we're going to have to check to make sure that the bottom of the flight to the, to the, to the bottom uh, conveyor housing is also 3 eighths to half an inch distance in between them. Now, eventually, after so many adjustments that they can be done on the chain, the chain will stretch enough to where it will not be any more adjustment left to do with the adjustment jack screws. So therefore, at that point, what we need to do, what it needs to be done, is actually shorten the chain. Therefore, you won't be able to, you will be able to do the adjustment correctly. So what, you, what is gonna have to be done at that point, 
the master link needs to be taken out and at that point you can actually take a half or a full link out from the chain that way you can actually achieve the adjustment that is required now once that is done of course and the pins are taken out from the links you need to check to make sure the holes are actually not wear enough or stretched enough to where the, 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 the chain is vulnerable of breaking. If the, if the holes, which they're around, if the holes are getting oval way too much, then the belt, the, I'm sorry, the chain needs to be replaced immediately. Now these are the adjustments and the checks that they have to be done in the conveyor chain. That way it is confirmed and it is actually making the sweeper work properly and efficiently during the operations. During the inspections of the conveyor chain, of course, there is, is necessary to check on the sprockets. You have one here and two on the top. Those sprockets, of course, they, they, uh, as they are running day in, day out, the millings, which are the most notorious type of, uh, of, uh, of uh, material that you will pick up, they have the tendency to stick in between the sprockets and the chain. That way the sprockets are actually wear out prematurely. Once you see that the sprockets actually start missing parts, those sprockets will have to be replaced. Those inspections and those checks, they have to be done regularly, depending of course what kind of material is being picked up by the, by the, by the sweeper. Now, it can be sooner, it can be later, does not really matter. However, those inspections and those checks that have to be made and those adjust adjustments that have to be made in order to make sure that the sweeper operates correctly and it is efficient when it comes to picking up the material.